So I spent some time trying out the beta for Prisma 2, and this video is just some of my thoughts on the entire process and some of the things that I liked and some of the things that I disliked. So first off, I thought it'd be good to get kind of us both on the same page of what Prisma 2 actually is, because it is quite different from Prisma 1. And in fact, if you actually know what Prisma 1 is, it's probably best to totally forget about it and pretend it just never existed. So now what it does is help you fetch data from your database. It supports four databases right now, MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQLite. And you can kind of think of it as serving a similar role to what a ORM or ORM would or a query builder. But it is a little bit different than kind of the existing solutions in the Node.js ecosystem. So we're gonna go over some of the key differences. And the first one is your Node.js code is no longer going to directly talk to the database anymore. So what's gonna happen with Prisma 2 is they have this Rust binary that's gonna run alongside your Node.js code. So your Node.js code is gonna to talk to that Rust binary, which is then gonna to talk to the database. This is a diagram from Prisma's docs to give you an idea of what it actually looks like. So basically you're going to be calling functions from the Prisma client in your Node.js code that's gonna send it to the query engine, which is their Rust binary. And then that is going to convert those function calls to SQL, and that's going to call that on the database. Now I will say it does strike me a bit odd that Prisma is introducing a middleman into the equation, but supposedly it is supposed to enable some features or functionalities that otherwise would not be possible. But to be honest, I'm not sure 100% what that functionality actually is. The second difference is instead of defining your database models using classes or objects, you're given two different choices with Prisma. Number one, you can have it introspect an existing database that you have. Or number two, you can use this syntax that is kind of similar to GraphQL to define your models. When I tried defining my own data models, I noticed three things. Number one, it doesn't autocomplete for you when you're actually using it, the types. So for example, if I want something to be a string, I have to type out that entire word string. Whereas with Typeform, I can get some autocompletion if I want something to be a text type or a double or et cetera. Number two, you do get some type safety if you actually install the Prisma extension in VS Code. So if I like misspell a type or something, it's gonna alert me, which is nice. And then three, I thought the relationships were actually pretty easy to set up and I didn't have any problems getting those working. Overall, I thought the process was fine. The third difference is Prisma 2's client is somewhere in between an ORM and a query builder. It's kind of closer to a query builder in that you're just working with plain objects, but it's also kind of like an ORM because it has a higher level API than usually a normal query builder would have. And what I mean by that is when I use a query builder like Nex, I'm basically writing SQL with JavaScript functions. So if I want a join to happen, I say do an inner join. Whereas with Prisma, I just tell it what data I want, including the relationships, and then it worries about handling underneath the hood what SQL is generated to actually get me that data. So as far as I know, there's no way in Prisma 2 to actually tell it to say, do an outer join or an inner join on a specific column that you want to do, unless you're doing a raw SQL query. But the entire client for Prisma 2 works incredibly well with TypeScript. Even when I use a TypeScript specific ORM like TypeORM, there's still kind of holes in what the type system actually covers and I can do things that I shouldn't be able to do. And Prisma I noticed does a much better job of actually covering that stuff and telling me, hey, you can't do that. That type should be nullable or whatever. And the way Prisma accomplishes this is a little bit weird. You actually generate the types and the client itself based on your data model. So what this means is after you create a Prisma schema file, you actually need to run a Prisma generate command before you can actually use Prisma in your code or this stuff doesn't work. And because the client is generated based off of the data model, every time you change the data model, say rename a field, change the type of a field, you need to rerun Prisma generate to get the updated client. And as you can imagine, this does cause a little bit of friction. It's very easy to just forget about running Prisma Generate after renaming a field or changing a field. And every time you actually send your project to a teammate or someone else to try, they need to make sure they run Prisma Generate before anything will actually work. Prisma does have a post install that's supposed to generate these types whenever you do an NPM install, but for whatever reason, Yarn1 has some problems with that, so I actually had to include this in my package.json to make things a little bit smoother. And you're probably gonna wanna do is some kind of setup where you use node daemon to watch the data model file, so every time you make a change, it automatically runs Prisma Generate for you or something like that. So either way, you can get around some of the problems, but there is still a little bit of awkwardness, but personally, I'm willing to make that trade for a better type system or better type safety and a better API. And that is actually what I liked best about Prisma 2. 
After I actually generate the client, it's very nice to use. The auto completion is spot on. It checks types very well and loading relationships in the types for them also is very easy and seemed to work very well. And I just felt very productive using it. And although Prisma 2 is kind of no longer related to GraphQL, there's still GraphQL plugins that you can use with Type GraphQL and GraphQL Nexus that allow you to auto-generate resolvers or CRED resolvers from the Prisma models. And it also will fetch relationships for you so you don't have to worry about the N plus one problem. So there's no other Node.js, ORM, or you know data fetching library that does that for you right now. And so that is a pretty nice combination still. Okay, so now onto the two problems that I noticed. So first off, I noticed Prisma underneath the hood was generating a lot of SQL statements to do the thing that I told it to do, where if I did that thing myself, like I wrote the SQL for it myself, I could usually write it in a single SQL statement. And I'm not talking about situations where I'm like fetching five different relationships or something. I'm just talking about simple CRUD operations. So for example, take this Prisma code here where I'm trying to update the published field. Prisma generates the following SQL. So for some reason, it selects some data ahead of time, it does an update, and then it selects some data again at the end. So it used three SQL statements to update the table and then return the fields afterwards. Whereas if I was writing this code by hand, usually the SQL that I would use is just a single update statement that also include the returning clause at the end to get any fields that I wanted back. Now the good news is Prisma is actually aware of this issue and for the beta, they were focusing on making things stable and then in the future, they are going to be optimizing things further. And the second problem I ran into is there's kind of just a lot of rough edges right now. There's just some random stuff that will come up and kind of block you or slow you down when using it. I ran into some bugs using it. There were several times where I just needed to wipe node modules and reinstall everything because there was a problem with the Rust binary. I had some caching problems with Prisma Studio and I spent several hours trying to debug with one of my teammates why Prisma Generate wasn't running on his Windows computer. There was just kind of stuff that would pop up and just slow us down. Lucky for me, I was doing a lot of this while I was live streaming and there was a Prisma team member watching and so they were able to hold my hand through the process. So shout out to Drigger aka Harsh, you definitely saved me a ton of time. But it can be tricky to kind of figure out this stuff on your own. I was off stream trying out Prisma and GraphQL Nexus, which are both in beta, and something wasn't working for some reason. And it can be very easy to be caught in the web of old documentation and old examples, and you just kind of go down a rabbit hole of doing the wrong things for quite a few hours. And I'm not the only one. I saw a tweet from Kitse the other day where he was trying to do something with Prisma 2, and it didn't quite work out for him. But either way, this stuff doesn't really change my opinion of Prisma. They are still in beta, so stuff like this is expected. And I do see myself using Prisma in the future most likely, but at the time being, I don't really want to churn and being an early adopter with it. So I'm gonna be waiting until it matures a little bit, it optimizes its queries, maybe for the 1.0 release, and then I will come back and spend some more time with it. But until then, I will not be touching the Prisma 2 client.